you. So without further ado, Donna Meeks from the Department of Art and Design. Hello, hello everyone. Uh, as I was introduced, my name is Donna Meeks and I am the department chair and the professor of painting in the Department of Art and Design at Lamar University. Uh, by the way, Lamar University is accredited by the National Association of Schools of Art and Design, or NASAD. And uh, we, the faculty, staff, and students of LU Art and Design are very proud to have our shared pursuit of excellence recognized by this important organization. Uh, there are quite a few majors in our department. We offer four undergraduate degrees, two professional and two liberal arts. The Bachelor of Fine Arts degree in graphic design provides an uh, opportunity to take 65% or 78 credit hours of the 120 in art and design content. This gives the student learner, the student designer, the opportunity to develop a portfolio that they will later use to pursue a job opportunity or perhaps graduate study. It's important uh, in a professional degree to have this kind of concentrated study. The BS in graphic design is a liberal arts degree in the field, and it allows students to combine graphic design with an area of study outside of art and design. And for many learners, this is a wonderful opportunity to combine uh, content and to maybe pursue some future job opportunity that is being born every day. Uh, the Bachelor of Fine Arts in Studio Art is a professional degree in the studio arts in which you may concentrate in drawing, painting, printmaking, sculpture, or photography. And again, it has that same 78 credit hour concentrated course of study that helps you hone your creative talents and produce a portfolio that will take you to a career or to perhaps further study. The Bachelor of Science degree in Studio Art is a course that leads to all level certification for art education. In other words, it leads you to certify to teach in the public schools and beyond. There are quite a few study choices in our department and the flexibility to combine areas of interest to pursue the art or design career of your choice. But don't worry about exploring the department and perhaps changing your mind about your future in art and design. All students take the same courses during the first two years and all courses easily apply to other majors within the department. All BFA students have the option of completing an internship related to their studies. Our students have completed internships in design firms, artist studios, art museums, and not-for-profit art spaces and organizations. And it's a wonderful resume building opportunity as well. All BFA students, I should say, present an exhibition of their work in the Dishman Art Museum through our senior thesis program. The art museum is conveniently located next to the primary facility on our campus. And again, it's a wonderful way to begin building that resume prior to graduation. Um, our graphic design alumni are working in a broad number of fields related to this program of study. These include web design, user interface design, user experience design, graphic design, and motion graphics, to name a few. Our studio art majors are working in both fine and applied fields with their degrees. In addition to pursuing a career as a fine artist, many choose to apply their skills to character development, animation, and 3D printing. Our art education majors, as I said, are working as EC12 art specialists in the schools. However, many choose to pursue graduate ed education in museum education and other allied fields. In the Lamar Department of Art and Design, our faculty guide students in developing both technical and conceptual skills, as well as an understanding of the broadening career opportunities in our field. Our art and design faculty are working artists, 
designers, photographers, art historians, and art educators. They exhibit, present at conferences, and publish books and articles in their respective fields. A list of our faculty, including their artist websites, is available on our faculty page on the lamar.edu website. And I think it's important to look at the kinds of work uh, your future faculty are involved in so that you can determine if that's the direction you wanna take your talent. The art and design faculty regularly engage students with pre-professional activities from iron pours to art and design conferences. We also have a large number of student organizations within our department. And again, that helps with getting to know other students and networking. The Department of Art and Design maintains a profile on Facebook and other major social media sites. We would love it if you would friend us. Please try to keep up with what we do in the department. We're very busy. Art and design majors, you should know, begin their studies on day one. You will be enrolled in foundation studies courses and art history along with academic courses, such as math or English, et cetera. A typical first semester might involve drawing one, design one, art history one, and your choice of two academic courses. This would give you 15 credits or full-time study at Lamar. Our facilities are well maintained, including two Macintosh computing labs for graphic design and digital photography, a rendering lab for student experimentation with VR technology, a 3D printing array with high level scanning ability, laser cutting equipment, a traditional chemical photography darkroom, a foundry with capacity for aluminum, bronze, and iron, and working studios for drawing, painting, printmaking, and ceramics, to name just a few. Our art and design facilities will be your working studio for your four years of study at Lamar University. Many of our studios are available to students 24 seven, so that whenever you need to create or work on your painting, your drawing, et cetera, outside of class, you will have the studio facility to go to. By the way, we are offering a Cardinal Community this fall semester, fall 2020. And again, another great opportunity to get to know like-minded student artists and designers right away. Students in this non-credit class meet every Friday afternoon to explore the opportunities for art and design networking in Lamar University's Department of Art and Design, both on campus and beyond as well as explore some of the issues facing art and design today, not only nationally or locally, but globally as well. So at this point, I would be very happy to answer any questions that might be out there. Hey Donna, it might be really um, helpful to talk about all of the cool things that art and design has going on. I know off the top of my head, um, I was just able to participate in the Iron Pour. Um, so maybe talk a little bit about that, but also maybe uh, about all of our professors. Like if you're a photography student, you would study under Keith Carter, um, virtual reality lab, our 3D printing lab. I mean, there's just so many cool things going on over in art and design that it's, it's hard to talk about. You really have to sort of see it, but it's just, it's all so cool. It is very cool. And I, let's start with 3D printing because we had a, a unique event recently where uh, because our sculptor, Professor Kurt Deerhog, often goes to Germany and then to Poland as a visiting artist, uh, the artists there along with our artists and students here decided to have a collaborative 3D printed uh, sculpture show at the Dishman Art Museum and also at the university in Poland. So what happened was uh, our students and our professors sent their objects electronically to Poland and the Polish students and their professors sent their objects here to be printed in our facility. And so we had at the same time in the United States and in Poland, the same exhibition on view. 
And it was wonderful because we were able to use our 3D printing facility to print these objects. Of course, our professor had to patinate or apply surface treatments per the artist's request. And then they were, it was a beautiful show. And a lot of times, though it's plastic, when you patinate it, you apply a metallic surface, it might look like cast bronze. It might look like iron. It might just be polychrome, so it's painted various colors. But it was such an exciting moment for our students. Imagine this, an undergraduate student at Lamar University can put an international exhibition on their resume before they ever even graduate. So I think that's awesome. Now, you also talked a little bit about photography and what's really unique about the photo program at Lamar is we have two photo faculty. One, of course, is Keith Carter, who's internationally recognized photographer from Beaumont, Texas, we should say. And also Prince Varghese Thomas, who is our digital photographer, and he is resident in Houston. And both photographers exhibit in galleries uh, in Houston and beyond. And uh, what's important to know about our photo program, students have an opportunity to learn the traditional chemical practice in the dark room and also apply some of this photographic understanding in the digital facility. So dark room to digital, meaning computers, but also in between, we offer courses in uh, color, large format photography and video art. So the gamut of photographic expression is available to our students. And our, our alumni from the program are either currently working on their MFA degrees elsewhere or are pursuing careers as artists or are faculty already teaching out at other universities. So very strong part of our program. I should say our drawing curriculum is being developed right now by Associate Professor Christopher Troutman, who is including digital drawing in the upper level drawing instruction. So you start off very um, traditional, graphite, charcoal, these types of things, observational drawing. And then you go to learning human anatomy and drawing from the life model. And then you proceed forward to ideas like character development and narrative imagery. So a lot of our students who are majoring in drawing have every intention of going on to character development uh, jobs in Hollywood or other places. And we have two recent alums who are actually working right now in that field in California. So we're excited about that. And um, what else? You asked me other questions. Oh, graphic design. So uh, in graphic design, what is important for people to know is that it's a broad-based curriculum. So not only are you learning typography, brand identity, you're taking courses in web design, 3D printing, and uh, illustration. So it's a broad-based program. You also have an opportunity to take a course in portfolio development. So right before senior thesis in graphic design, you will take your projects and hone them so that they're the most polished that they can be, because that is what's important for identifying, seeking, and securing a job with your BFA in graphic design from Lamar University. And I must say, our students in that field have a very high placement rate can't cite it specifically, but I can tell you students are able to secure opportunities right away. Um, what else did I want to say about graphic design? Again, it's broad-based, and you might go out and pursue a career immediately, or you might pursue graduate study, and we've had students go on for visualization MFAs at other programs because they want that high-end technology. So you learn the basics at Lamar, and then pursue a graduate degree in a higher level of application, let's say holographic projection or other kinds of augmented reality, virtual reality, these types of things that are having such an impact uh, in terms of um, entertainment, advertising, et cetera. And of course, let me set, talk a little bit about painting since I have a vested interest in painting. 
I am the painting professor. And what I can tell you about the painting program through foundation studies as well as uh, advanced studies in painting, students have an opportunity to not only work with diverse media from gouache to oil paint and beyond, um, they also have the opportunity to experiment. So perhaps you want to be a figurative painter or perhaps you want to be an abstract painter. This is both available to the students who want to pursue this. And um, you really develop your portfolio and your skills. And I will say our student painters have great support from our community. So many times people will purchase their work not only in our annual Le Grand Ball art auction, but also call me and reach into the studio to purchase artworks. One more thing I wanna say about study, and then you can prompt me with some more specifics, but, um, I will say this, we also have lots of opportunities that come in from the community and uh, for jobs that are career related for our students. And again, all of these opportunities from illustration to, to branding and all, all of these types of things uh, help build the student's resume and portfolio prior to graduation. So we're very career focused, as I said before, in the department. I know this semester our drawing students participated in a drawathon. Tell us a little bit about that because that seemed very, I'm not positive about this, but this is the first time we did something like this. It just seemed very groundbreaking and so fun. Well, it was fun. And this was something co-sponsored by Lamar and that was Chris Troutman. And um, he worked with another uh, drawing artist from a regional uh, community college. And uh, basically through the Texas Association of Schools of Art, we invited uh, students and their professors from all over Texas to come here and spend the day together drawing in our studios and having a pizza party. We love pizza parties. And uh, then ending the evening with an exhibition of the work created that day uh, in the Dishman Art Museum. And it was a great opportunity for young people to network with each other. And literally, they, they, would, they drew for three hours in the morning, had their lunch together, and then another three hours to produce original work and then exhibit it together. No, that's... I, it was wonderful. It was such a great, and I want to say something else. You know, another great thing that Chris Troutman collaborates with area school teachers, high school art teachers, and other interested parties in the community is what we call Comic Jam. And that's a Saturday program where uh, anybody interested in comic books and character development can come to Lamar University Department of Art and Design on a Saturday and then draw and develop characters together and learn a little bit more about narrative art and uh and then have a pizza party because as i said we really like pizza i think and um and it's just a it's always a, such a popular program and our high schools uh in our immediate city and beyond actually participate in this it's very cool we have a question if you know or have a statistic for people um, getting jobs that are graduating in graphic design I do know, I don't know about after, but I do know that um, our college has, we hire our graphic, our graphic design students. We had one these past uh, few semesters, Michelle Lancaster. She's one of your graphic design students and she has designed our college magazine. She has designed t-shirts for us, um, posters, signs, banners, you name it. I mean, we have just depended on her so much. So I don't know if you have an actual statistic I don't have an actual st statistic, as I had mentioned earlier, but in answer to that question, my observation is that the majority of our graphic design alumni find employment within six months of graduation. And my understanding is, and again, you have to be sort of open and be aware of what's out there. It might not be a job in Beaumont. It might be in Houston or Dallas. It might be a job outside of Texas. Imagine that. And uh, so it depends on what the student wants to be. 
And one of the things we talk about is looking at the job listings while you're a student, getting a sense of what employers are interested in, and gearing your studies towards the thing, your goal, and um, just subscribing to, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the one that I subscribe, indeed.com is one I just subscribe to, uh, just so I know what's going on. And so I can share with that with students and encourage students to keep an eye on that. And you know, when you go to university, you're studying traditional things and a little bit of new, knowing that in the world of work, things just keep changing. So with your BFA, you'll be able to get that initial job, but you're gonna do a lot of learning and growing once you're employed. So I, I am confident in saying that uh, the majority of our BFA in graphic design do have employment within six months. That's good. Let's talk about study abroad. I know um, obviously our art and design students aren't going anywhere this summer, but last summer they traveled to Italy and had amazing stories when they came back. They were very inspired. They came back with these beautiful portfolios. Um, I got to, uh, a couple of the students shared them with me and uh, Xenia, one of our um, faculty, art faculty members. And it was so much fun to just listen to them and hear them. I mean, you could just feel their excitement and their energy. And um, they were just uh, so, they came, it just seems like they came back as different people, but they all had the same, they all said the same thing about how inspired they were. So maybe let's talk about our study abroad trips. Well, I can tell you this, uh, doesn't study abroad always change you? Of course it does. It broadens your view and your mind and your perspective, I think. And of course, not, not this year, but last year we tried to, uh, gear our study abroad Italy trip to the Venice Biennale. So if you're a Lamar University art and design student uh, and you wanna go to Italy, you'll be able to say, I saw the Venice Biennale. And the Biennale is an international exhibition of artists globally. And what a great opportunity to not only go to Italy, learn about the history, draw in the atmosphere, and actually take Xenia's course uh, where you're drawing on site, sitting where Michelangelo sat, where Raphael sat, and all the great artists of the past, Caravaggio, because you will be in Florence. And um, very excited about that program. And again, Italy, we gear towards the Biennale because why not? And the other thing we do with study abroad, we make sure that students are able to take six credits in a single summer term. Our study abroad takes place in summer. And that way the student can still qualify for financial aid in summer, that helps. And, and also actually earn six credit hours. So for example, perhaps you're traveling to Italy, but you're enrolled in our history of graphic design course online. So even though you're, history of graphic design teacher is here in Beaumont, you're in Florence and with Xenia drawing and then learning online. So that happens. And also uh, Christopher Troutman takes people to Japan. We've had students go to Japan a couple of times now, I believe. And uh, for those students who love manga, art and, and all things Japanese, uh, it's a great opportunity for students to go and experience the culture. We've also had uh, tours to Russia and to France, of course, right? So a uh, very strong commitment uh, in the faculty to make sure our students have that study abroad experience, as is true of all of Lamar University, really. There's just a really strong study abroad program at our university. Okay, what if we have a student that knows they want to uh, major in art, but they're not sure if they want to do photography, drawing, graphic design? Do you have any advice for them of, of what they should do? Again, I'll, I'll reiterate what I said earlier. The way we've designed our programs, we have all these degrees and these concentrations and majors, is that uh, we allow for some mind changing. <laughs> so. Uh, do not worry if you're going to study art and design at Lamar University 
and you're afraid you might change your mind, you really have the first year and a half to two years to explore. We do want you to make a commitment by your junior year, but all art and design students start in the same foundation studies program, drawing one, two, three, design one, 2D studies, design two, 3D studies, and design three, color theory, and then life drawing. So if you start off as graphic design and you realize actually photography is actually what I want, you can change your mind many times and even at the end of that second year and lose no credit because it's designed to be flexible and move between the various degree programs within the department. If you come in as a graphic designer and then decide to be biology, that's a different story. So, um, but there's lots of flexibility. And again, what I would say is don't be afraid. You get to explore. There's room for electives. Let's say you explore sculpture, even though you're graphic design, you can take that as an elective in the graphic design program. Does that answer that question, I think? Yeah, I think so. Um, we have a question about the um, classroom environment and the structure, if you could sort of um, explain what that looks like in a given day. Well, it depends on the classroom. So let's talk about either kind of classroom. So I think uh, in art history, uh, it will appear as a traditional classroom. You'll be with other students, you'll be in seats, and you'll be learning about art history through images and the lecture of your professor. However, in art history, they also have opportunity for course discussion and people get to talk to each other about their ideas, especially as you move up through the program. And um, so there's that. Now in studio art, let's talk about a painting class or any studio art course. Those actually meet uh, for five and a half hours a week. And that means you're actually in the class for two hours and 40 minutes, two days a week, in which you are perhaps hearing a lecture, but primarily working on your art under the supervision of a professor who is guiding you and talking to you one-on-one. -on -one. And then there are critiques where we all sit and look at the work and talk about it in terms of its effectiveness. Also, you can expect to have four to six hours of homework, homework from studio courses in which you're asked to continue working on your painting your graphic design, your sculpture, your photography, and you certainly have access to the facilities. So there's a lot of time commitment, but you're actually creating. You're doing the thing you came here to do right away. And I, I think that uh, might answer that question. And again, I wanna reiterate that there is studio access. Now let's take, for example, painting. You will actually be assigned a space for the semester and you can come in at any time to work. In the computer labs for graphic design or digital photography, they are open to student use during the business hours outside of class time, but we also provide monitored use out in the evenings and on weekends for students to come and work in those facilities also. You uh, shared with us your new big paintbrush earlier. And I always see lots of our students walking around with drawing pads and pencils and all kind of special materials that they may need. Do we offer any sort of student assistance to help with the purchase of those? Uh, there's many answers to that. One, uh, we do offer scholarships in the department for those who want to apply and there are other scholarship opportunities across campus. Within the department, some materials are provided in class. Others are made available for purchase through the cashier's office. There are just some products that are just not widely available locally. And so we make them available to students in the classroom. So there will be expense um, in that way. I will say that um, faculty have an eye on the budget and they try to make sure they maintain the affordability of their classes. So we're well aware of what things cost. But for example, let's take an iron core. Students would not go out and buy their own Coke for the, the furnace. 
we buy that and provide that. Now they do pay for the iron to be melted based on the weight of their sculpture. Um, photography, students are expected to buy their own film and paper. However, uh, there's no way when you're talking about black and white photography and film development, it's just no longer widely available. So we provide the chemistry and the facility and also many of our students taking, let's say photo one, where you're learning actual black and white photography and printing, uh, we're not gonna ask a painting major, a graphic design major to invest in a film camera because they're not really gonna use that necessarily in their career. They're gonna be more geared towards a digital camera. So we have a library of 35 millimeter cameras that we lend to our students so that they don't have to purchase that. So they borrow from the library of cameras. And I will say this, this is an interesting thing. Uh, the reason we have a library of these cameras is the generosity of Lamar University alumni. We put out a call for uh, 35 millimeter cameras to all alumni across the campus, all majors. And my goodness, the generosity of the people, we started receiving a lot of cameras. So because of their gift, simple gift of I'm not using this anymore, I'll give it to you. Um, we were able to really help support and meet the learning needs of our students. So of course, we're always grateful for that. Very nice. And speaking of uh, generosity from our community members, didn't we have a community member offer to pay for um, our students to go to Houston to some art museums? Oh my goodness. Uh, first, uh, we do take field trips at least once annually to go to the fine museums that exist in Houston, Texas. Museum of Fine Arts, the Menil, et cetera. And uh, we had a community person from Spring, actually, Texas, uh, donate to uh, take a field trip last year to uh, Spring to see the Pearl Fincher Museum. And then we went on to go to the MFAH and then to the Menil. And of course, we then took students to Texas Art Supply so they could stock up before coming back home to the dorms. and ever popular we stopped at Bucky's for dinner on the way home so you could eat on the bus because it's a long day with a fun trip and a great time for the kids and again getting to know your classmates but I should also say a other field trips that we've taken we took them to the MFAH to see the Van Gogh show before that and that was actually paid for by our friends of the arts monies so that's a, a group of uh, generous people in Beaumont, Texas and beyond who we get together annually for our fundraiser. And then that money also helps support bus trips. And then um, don't a lot of our students donate some of their artwork to the LeGrand Ball um, that helps benefit the Friends of the Arts, it goes back to them. I'm not sure if they receive something from they, that. But. They do receive. So. Um, our students, our students, our faculty, our alumni, and our special friends uh, submit their art to the art auction annually, and artists receive back 40% of the sales. So, you know, that's there to cover the cost of materials and all of this for our students. And then that produces scholarship monies and field trip monies and monies to bring in guest artists. And um, we do try to bring in art historians, designers, artists to come and meet our students in the space. Now this coming year, I know the faculty are working on uh, guest artists appearing on our big screen TVs live, like we're doing now, uh, since we're all social distancing. And so uh, we do try to connect our students to opportunities to hear and see the work of other artists. I know um, another opportunity that all of our art and design students look forward to to have their work displayed is the senior thesis. Hmm. And that's sort of what we would be in right now. And I know we're doing it differently. We're doing it virtually now. But uh, maybe if we could talk a little bit about that, because that's sort of a culmination of what they've worked for these four years leading up to their senior year. Well, I have something else I can announce on uh, <laughs> FaceTime. Uh, so, yes. 
unfortunately, because of what we're doing right now, our students can't have their in-person exhibition, but they are doing their oral defenses and they are completing their designs and their artwork. And we're having a wonderful experience with Zoom oral defenses and we're able to invite guests to the oral defense space. But, more, but we just feel as a faculty, normally the faculty will have their show in August, September. But we felt it was such a shame that our students had worked so hard for four years uh, that we have sacrificed our show time in the fall for the May exhibition. So barring any unforeseen circumstance and hoping for the best we are hoping that our may students they'll still graduate but they'll get their live exhibition in the dishman art museum in august so we thought that's what we needed to do for our students that's so and, wonderful and you know it's a museum exhibition it goes on your uh resume before you graduate we're sort of um, nearing our 40 minute time limit. So I wanna thank Donna Meeks, our, again, our chair for the Department of Art and Design for um, being so helpful in um, taking the time this morning to talk to all of our students. And I wanna thank everyone from the um, admissions department and the Welcome Center at Lamar, and then also Hannah, our interpreter. Um, I wanna remind everyone that if we didn't get your question answered, please leave your email address over in the, um, message section in the chat section, and we will get back with you. I'm also going to share my contact information. And let's see if everyone can see that. There's my contact information. If you wanna jot that down, you can always call or email me with your questions. And um, I will send that or I'll send that to whatever faculty member or over to Donna, or uh, we'll get your question answered. So thank you very much for joining us. And again, this um, has been recorded and will be posted at lamar.edu slash visit. Thanks everyone.